the best money we have ever spent on our cruising lives in this sailboat. This is a list of the top 10 things that we have spent money on for our cruising lives that we have loved and zero regrets about doing and if we had to spend the money on them again, we would do it. And if you're curious about our biggest regrets on spending money with cruising, check out that video. We are gonna do this list from least to greatest. So, number 10. Our Honda generator. Our Honda generator is an EU 2000. It cost us $1,000. And it's particularly important for us because A, it's very compact, and it has lasted us for two years so far in the salty ocean environment. And we have a special circumstance in that we have an electric motor. So every now and then, we need the extra little kick of power. And when we need the power, it's actually very fuel efficient. In the past two years that we've been using this thing, we've burned about 20 gallons of gasoline. We use it mostly to just top off our batteries. Our primary source of electricity is solar panels, but on very cloudy days, like today, there's no sun. And if you have this for a couple weeks, our batteries start getting really low. This can be really bad uh, for things like refrigeration and electricity to run our AIS and such. Um, so it's just really good to know that we have the generator to just kind of top off our house bank and our motor bank if we need it. And it's just been very good peace of mind and has come in handy in a couple really tight spots. Number nine. Our Dickinson diesel heater. This unit costs about $3,000, which is a lot of money. But used, I bought ours for 500, and it has made the boat go from camping to a home. That makes it so on really cold, chilly days, the boat is toasty warm. And also, if there's a lot of humidity, it'll just dry the boat right out. So if you're a full-time live aboard like we are, we highly recommend something like this Dickinson diesel heater because it really does turn the boat from habitation to home life. It makes it cozy and warm inside, sometimes even a little too warm in the dead of winter in Maryland. So if that tells you anything, then you'll understand why this was money well spent. And I think at this point, we would have spent the full $3,000 if we hadn't found one used. Number eight. Our Mantis Anchor. Having a good anchor is everything when you're cruising. Because especially if you're cruising on a budget and you don't have the ability to just pull into marina after marina, Anchoring is going to be your life's blood, and you need an anchor that you can trust in all sorts of conditions. They also say that your anchor is actually your truest insurance policy, because your insurance policy with Geico or whoever you have, that's for after your boat got wrecked. Your anchor stops your boat from getting wrecked. So having a really good anchor means that your boat will last, which means that you can keep cruising. We decided to buy our Mantis anchor new at $750, and we have no regrets about it. We are an extremely heavy boat. We weigh 18 tons, and so it was especially important for us to have a very strong anchor that we could trust. The Mantis that we bought is a 65 pound Mantis, so it's pretty big for this boat, but we sleep a lot better with a really big anchor. Number seven. Dill, our drifter sail. So this is our big light air sail that we put up on days like today when there's no wind. Our drifter is the shape of a Genoa, but it's cut out of spinnaker material, so it's super lightweight which means in very light airs, it'll fill, hold its shape, and carry us along. Now, the advantage of a drifter over a Genoa, since they're the same cut, is the weight of the cloth. So a Genoa is set up so that you can run that sail in much heavier winds. But in those really heavy winds, then you have too much sail up, and then you want to make it smaller, and it's, it's not a good combination. So with the drifter, when we don't have wind, we can put out a huge sail. And when we have wind, we take it down, put up the correct sail for those conditions. Unlike a spinnaker, Dill, our drifter, is also stayed. And having him hanged on is makes it really easy to put him up and take him down quickly if need be, if the conditions change. 
Now, this is an especially important sale for us, again, because of our electric motor and the fact that we can't just motor through super light conditions like today. We need to be able to put up a sail that can catch even the smallest puffs of wind so that we can get somewhere and make miles. Unlike a spinnaker, which would also be useful in conditions like this, being how he has a stay, we don't need a sock, we don't need a top-down furler, we don't need any of that mess. And then when we're bringing him down, it's not this giant sail flapping everywhere, he's on the stay. And if you need to bring him down, you can just pull in the downhaul and he comes down just like a window blind. There's no drama, there's no flapping or confusion. It's, it's very easy and very manageable. Number six. Our trisail. PJ is the sail that we have ended up using the most on our entire ocean crossing and further adventure. I mean, PJ is by far the most important sail on this boat. They always say that the two least used sails in a boat are the trisail and the spinnaker. And the spinnaker is because it's annoying and it's a big hassle. And if there is that little of wind, people just motor, which is in that case why we fly our drifter. And then when it's too much wind, people like to just become a powerboat, drop all their sails and motor through the storm. We don't have a diesel, so we don't have that luxury of turning into a powerboat. So in those situations, we put up our storm sails and our trisail has been so important for us because it allows us to keep control of the boat, keep steerage, keep motion, like forward going and total control in really, really heavy winds. And when the winds get above 60 knots and we don't enjoy sailing in those conditions anymore, we just heave to using our trisail once again. Another really important feature of our trisail is that it takes the boom out of the equation. So when we're in rough conditions and the boom would be flapping, sloshing around, um, which is both very dangerous and can really hurt the traveler, um, taking the boom out of the equation is really important. Our trisail, PJ, has his own track that he runs up the mast. He has his own halyard. So everything is there ready to go. All we have to do is hoist him and then the sheets run to his clue and the boom is completely uninvolved. When I say that this is our most used sail, I mean it. When there's actually not storm conditions, we'll still be using PJ because when we're going dead downwind and we don't want to worry about accidental jibes or any of that mess, we just put PJ up. And if the boat jibes in the middle of the night and the sail just flops the other side, that's all that happens, the sail just flops over. And a lot of times we'll fly it in conjunction with the drifter because they just hang out. PJ doesn't really add much sail area, but it adds a little and it gets us moving just a smidge faster. Now, PJ came with the boat, but with all of the repairs and everything we've done over the years, it's ended up adding up to about... Uh, the repairs have been $130. A new trisail would be around $700. We would say though, even if PJ hadn't come with the boat, we would have spent every cent happily for a brand new trisail. And we have uh, spent some money over the years on minor repairs, but it still counts in the category, I believe, as money well spent. Number five. Our tethers. Tethers are more expensive than you would expect. Each one of these was 160 bucks. We have used them every single day that we are at sea. At any given moment, we are tethered in at least one area to the boat. The most important thing on a boat is safety, and I think that the tethers have been probably the most important piece of safety equipment that we have purchased over the years. So the idea of a tether isn't that it'll keep you from falling off the boat, it's that it keeps you attached to the boat. Because if you fall off, you're not gonna be found. The waves are big, you're done. So having a great life jacket that'll keep you floating means that you'll just wash up somewhere, something will eat you at the surface, but it's not that you're gonna be rescued. The tether though, keeps you on attached to the boat. You can be found, you can be pulled back in, and be rescued and saved. So that's like the super important thing. And we actually have, it's a double tether. So we have two clips. So when it's really, really nasty out and good chance that we're gonna fall overboard or get swept off the deck, we'll clip in twice before 
we unclip our other one to then clip into something new. I've had a couple times where big waves have caught me off guard and I'll be working and then I just get picked up in water and then I'm caught in the, uh, the strainer of our lifelines. And the tether is just holding me tight to take the tension off so I'm not, you know, all my weight on the lifelines. So tethers are really important. Number four, the sat phone or the satellite phone. We have an in-reach from Delorme, which they've then since been bought by Garmin. But the whole point of this is that friends and family can track us and see exactly where we are. So it actually serves two purposes. Um, one is the tracking and the other is the communication. So we did splurge and pay for unlimited texting, which has been really important for us because we're very close to our families and they need to know that we're alive in the morning uh, when they wake up and we're still alive in the nighttime before they go to bed. <laughs> it also allows us to be in contact and tracked by our patrons. It gives us a really wonderful way to connect with our patrons in that they, when given the password, can check at any given moment to see where we are while we're on a passage or a voyage. Higher level patrons can even text us at any point. So it's been just this great way to connect with our patrons while at sea when we have very minimal connection with anybody. Number three. Our monitor wind vane. If something happened to me or Herbie, the monitor wind vane would steer this boat to the end of the earth <laughs> beautifully. Before the monitor, we had our electric autopilot, which you can hear about in our other video about the worst money we ever spent. <laughs> the monitor was easily one of the most expensive additions to this boat, and it has been worth every single cent. It was $5,500 and we had to save up for it. We bought it at the boat show at a discount. We did everything we could to get this monitor because it steers the boat. It requires zero energy. It's incredibly reliable and we trust it completely. So while crossing the ocean, we actually never touch the helm. Like right now, neither of us are steering. We're looking, but our monitor is steering. One of the big drawbacks of a wind steering system is if there's no wind, you have no steerage. And that's where people love electronic autopilots. But in our case, where we don't have a motor to motor through the no wind areas, we're not moving. Because if there's no wind, we're not steering and we're also not sailing. So it's, it's beautiful in that once you have the wind vane set up and the sails balanced, everything is perfect. Number two. The life raft and the EPIRB. Now, we use these two in conjunction with one another because the life raft without the EPIRB is useless. <laughs> but the life raft is also one of the most important pieces of equipment anybody can spend money on on their boat. Nothing replaces safety when it comes to doing any kind of large voyage or crossing. And we firmly believed that before we left for our adventure and we still believe it now. Our life raft has never been opened, never been used, but just knowing that we have it makes it one of the most important things on this boat right now. That's a lot of money, especially for something that you hope to never need to use. But the reason that one is worthless without the other is with the life raft alone, you're floating, but no one's coming to get you. And with the EPIRB, they're coming for you, but you're not floating, so so you need the two. <laughs> That's why the EPIRB and the life raft are two of the most important things that we ever spent money on. Number one. The AIS transmitter. Now we had the ability to receive AIS before we left for this trip. Herbie installed that because it was really important for us to know who was surrounding us at any given moment. Seeing them is great because you see them, you radio them, they don't see you on the horizon, you radio them your coordinates, and they're like, okay, we'll keep an eye out for you. And you hope they do because otherwise you're dead. What we didn't have was the ability to transmit AIS. So though we knew where everyone else was, they didn't know that we existed. 
Now, showing up on their radar is nice because that's what our radar reflector is for. So when they when their radar transmits and sends out its signal, the echo from the boat gets back to them and shows up on their screen as a little dot that says something is there. They don't know who, what, how fast, what they are, nothing. That was a really big problem, especially since we're about to enter the Mediterranean, which is highly trafficked by large cargo ships. So the reason we didn't transmit at first was because it was simply too expensive for our budget. It's $1,000 for the minimal package if you're going to transmit. We decided to bite the bullet a couple months ago. And we actually questioned you all to see what you suggested and we went with your advice. We got the Vesper Marine XB8000 with Wi-Fi and it is awesome! From my cell phone, I can see all the ships that are around us. I can turn the alarm off from my cell phone, which Maddie loves that, because when I'm on watch and she's trying to sleep and it's beeping in there, I can hit the mute button and stay on watch. I don't have to run down while ships are around us. And one of my favorite things about it now is I can actually see not only who they are, where they are, how fast they're going, all those details. I can also see how big they are. The biggest one we've seen so far was 1,300 feet long. So you might have noticed that most of the things that we have listed today have been about safety because that's kind of the thing that we hold to be most important on the boat. And the AIS transmitter has turned out to be one of the most important pieces of equipment on the boat for safety. We come up as Wisdom, the sailing vessel, <laughs> on their display and there's no question as to where we are or anything, especially in the middle of the night and we've just, we've seen a huge difference so far um, on this passage just as the ships see us and start veering away from our path. It's it's been such an important thing because the scariest thing when you're out in the middle of the ocean is other boats hitting you. <laughs> this has been incredible peace of mind for us. So that is our list of the best money that we have spent on this boat. And we really want to hear from you now. What is the best money you ever spent? Let us know in the comments down below and we can't wait to read your responses. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. And if you'd like to follow our journey in real time on a map, receive postcards from our ports of call, and messages directly to the boat, you can go ahead and become a patron using the link in the description down below.